The operation of the filling machine with our motion controllers using CAM output modules for the conveyor, nozzle, and filling piston axes can be seen here. If we examine the entire machine's operation at a glance, we can see that all three servos work together to fill the containers as they pass by. In the upper right side, you can see a snapshot of the motion controller's visual programming environment with three CAM output modules providing different profile movement to each of the servos. As these axes rotate, all three servo motors move in sync to prevent spills or leaks from occurring. Let's take a look at how each axis performs individually. The conveyor axis is plotted as distance or stroke length versus time, where the distance is set up via an electronic cam. Here you'll see that the cam moves forward for a short period of time and then remains stationary during the rest of its stroke. After two periods of time, the cam process repeats itself. This is known as a feed cam. So for the entire timing chart on the bottom right, two cycles occur, which means that each cam axis rotates itself 360 degrees twice. The nozzle axis moves up and down to prevent spills from occurring and cannot move downward, obviously, while the conveyor is moving. Toward the beginning of its stroke, you'll see that the blue line is flat, which means the nozzle is not only waiting for the conveyor to stop moving, but also waiting for the filling piston to take up enough fluid for the dosing process. Two cycles take place, and you'll notice that the nozzle axis spends most of its time retracted in a stationary position at the top of its stroke, waiting for the conveyor and filling axes to become ready. For the filling piston, you'll notice downward movement from the yellow line represents a pulling motion. This takes place toward the beginning of the cycle. As soon as the nozzle axis has been fully inserted into a container, the piston immediately reverses its direction to push the fluid into the container. You'll see a short period of time where the yellow line is flat at the top of its stroke, which means that the piston sits still without any fluid inside of it for a very short period of time. Since this axis returns to its original position, the cam is defined as a reciprocal cam. Now, stepping back, we can bring all three of these movements together in a synchronized fashion to see how they work together. A key point to note is the timing between the nozzle stroke and filling stroke. As soon as the nozzle has been inserted fully into a container, in other words, the blue line is at its bottommost point, the nozzle, blue line, and the filling piston, the yellow line, move together. This can be seen where both of these lines change directions simultaneously. The timing chart with respect to motor speeds for the entire application with all five servo axes in motion using SSCNet3 technology can be illustrated as follows. Just to recap, all three cam axes move together. The layout here is slightly different since the vertical axis represents speed instead of distance, but the principle is exactly the same. Starting with the conveyor axis, products are indexed from one station to the next. At the filling station, the nozzle moves down while the piston draws fluid into its chamber. Next, both the nozzle and piston work together to move upward and push fluid respectively. In turn, this process repeats itself. What's new to this timing chart is the illustration of the loading and sealing stations, which operate on timers and photoelectric sensors. The loading axis moves 90 degrees at the start of every cycle, moving at the same timing as the conveyor. After indexing a new product, the conveyor has stopped moving, which allows the box to be dropped onto the conveyor. During the filling process, the sealing station closes around the top of the products, waits for a short period of time for the heat or glue to be applied, and then releases to return to its original starting position. This movement is essentially controlled with sensors and logic in the PLC that more or less guarantees the sealing process doesn't take place until the product arrives. The application flow starts with a loading station, where flat, compressed containers are individually transferred mechanically onto a rotating arm. The product gets expanded to take on its full shape while being transferred 90 degrees to its vertical position. At this point, heat and or glue is applied to seal the bottom of the container. A temperature controller is used to maintain a constant temperature in order to heat form each of the containers. The product is rotated another 90 degrees in preparation to be placed onto the conveyor. Finally, once the product reaches its bottom location, it's dropped onto the conveyor to be transferred to the filling station. The filling station uses a sensor as a checkpoint to guarantee that the filling process doesn't begin without a container in position. 
The filling nozzle, piston, and conveyor work together to fill each carton, where one inch of movement from the filling piston equates to 10 ounces of fluid. One gallon, in this case, requires a stroke length of approximately 12.8 inches. The sealing station also waits for a sensor before using absolute positioning commands to control the servo. This servo is mechanically linked so that its movement closes both of the sealing arms around the carton. Here, the temperature controller is used to maintain a constant temperature. At the end of the line is a pick and place robot option, which can be used to remove products from the line onto pallets, for example. Let's take a closer look at the program setup for this application. Within the motion programming software environment, MT Developer 2, each servo axis is configured with its appropriate mechanical setup information. For example, axis 1 is set up to use the degree setting to rotate cartons 90 degrees with each cycle. Axes 2 through 5 are configured in inches, with one inch of travel for every revolution of the motor. This setup depends on the machine, however, and should be set accordingly. Since axes 2, 3, and 4 operate together using cams, they have been set to be used as virtual mode axes, which means that a single virtual mode command transfers motion to all three physical axes at once. This is possible through the mechanical editor using SSCNet3 as shown. Since axis 1 and axis 5 operate independently with timers and sensors using direct commands, they have been configured as real mode axes. Within the mechanical editor, these axes are specified as real mode axes, using the option settings shown. Once both of these axes have been checked, they can be controlled directly, independent from the other three axes. The loading station, station 1, is commanded to move from a command in the motion controller. This servo move, also known as a K-block move in our SFC programming language, is called from the PLC based on a timer. The timer turns on and off based on the status of the filling station and the cartons per hour setting from the operator. The timer sets bit B6 in this case, which initiates the 90 degree movement. Focusing in on the servo move, you can see that W0, a 16 bit word value, is used to specify the target distance in degrees. This is an incremental servo move that takes place repeatedly, each time incrementing the product count. As illustrated previously, the filling procedure at station 2 takes place with synchronous movement on three servo axes using a combination of CAM profiles. This is possible with the fiber optic network, SSCNet3, to simultaneously engage movement on all three axes in virtual mode. Similar to the loading station, the PLC program lies at the heart of the program, orchestrating servo movement based on a timer. The same bit, B6, triggers the virtual servo motor to move within the mechanical editor. Here you'll see the servo command with the virtual mode K block number 1000. K1000 provides 360 degrees of movement, or 262144 pulses, to the virtual servo motor to rotate all three of the cams while the electronic clutches are closed. In other words, a single move from a virtual servo motor operates all three servo axes at once. A closer 